I want to give you a quick rundown of some marker tricks that I use in Final Cut Pro. So here's an empty timeline, and I'm going to come up into my media folder, which is where I put non-time-coded media. And I have a folder here called Sample Media. So I'm going to open up a shot here. And this is a shot of this uh, bench on, a, on the porch of a house that my mom used to live in many, many years ago. So here's this bench, and let's say I want to be able to mark this and find it later. So what you do, if you, if you put your cursor any place you want, you press the letter M on the keyboard, it drops down a marker. Now it happens to be called marker 4 because presumably I've made a few markers before this. And over here in my, t in my uh, bin it says marker 4. But while I have the cursor on that marker, if I hit the letter M again, I can label it. So I can go, we'll call that the bench. Click OK. So now the label shows up here, and that's kind of handy. It also shows up here. It's also kind of nice if you open up a bin, you can look down and you see this little triangle, and you go, oh, there was something here I like, and you twirl that down. Now, you can add multiple um, marks to a bin, uh, uh, markers to a clip too, but for now we're just going to put this one. So now let's take one clip. And we're going to drop this down into the timeline here. Now you'll see that that marker comes with the clip because the marker was applied while the clip lived in the bin. It was applied in the viewer, but while that clip was associated with the bin. So the clip, the marker always comes with the clip no matter how many times I bring it down into a timeline or multiple timelines. But if I take another look at this clip, I can see, oh, look at over here now, I see this hat. So maybe that's of interest. Now if I select the clip while it's in the timeline, hit the letter M to make the marker, hit the letter M again to label the marker, give it a name, click OK. Now I have two markers in the clip, but I have two markers of the, in the clip when it's in the timeline, only one while it's in the viewer, and over here, only one while it's in the bin, because this marker was placed while the clip was in the timeline, and therefore it is associated with the timeline. If I bring the uh, clip down again, I only have one, one uh, marker in the clip. So that's an important thing to remember about markers, that it matters when and where you apply a marker to a clip. Now there's other ways that we can deal with markers, and I'm going to delete all these markers. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a bunch of clips, select them in the bin here, pull them down, drop them into my timeline. Now I have a very simple rudimentary timeline. So what I can do now, let's say I'm scrubbing through this, and, and I've shown you this before, I like to deal with B-roll this way. So let's say I like this clip of the, uh, of the house here, and I want to put a marker here. Now if I have no clips selected in the timeline, I can place I can hit the letter M, and you can see, if I move my cursor over here, you can see I have my bin, but now it's up in the, in the ruler up here and not in the clip, because this marker is now a timeline marker and not a clip marker. Now, it's very important because if you don't have your, everything set up right, if I come over here and de ripple delete some clips, the marker stays, and, but the clips move. So if I was marking something like cool pan of the house, and I deleted some clips, that's bad. Now luckily Final Cut knows that that's potentially bad and by default this little checkbox gets tinked on and this is called Ripple Sequence Markers and you can also find that under Sequence, Ripple Sequence Markers. Once that's checked on it is, it is as though that marker is like glued to this frame of the clip. Now here's another little trick if you're trying to put your cursor right on a marker if you hit Shift M, it will jump to the next available marker, or if your playhead is past the marker, I can hit Option M. So that's another trick to markers. Now, let's say you're logging a tape. Let's say you're logging a, a, a whole bin full of clips uh, at once. Well, it can be kind of tedious to say, um, here's a marker, side of house, and then hit play, let it go, dun 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 dun, okay. Oh, here's the front of the house, stop, marker, you know, front of house. Okay, that's a little tedious to stop it all the time. So here's a cool trick. If I hit play, or the letter L on my keyboard, there's a good keyboard shortcut, you're going to want to remember this. Option, Shift, M, it drops the marker, opens the edit marker panel, allows me to name it, hit return, and, it, and I haven't stopped playing. So now I can hit Option Shift M, uh, side of house, 
I can hit Option Shift M here, a pan of front. And you see that? Now, the reason it's good to do this like this and put them in the timeline measure uh, ruler here is once I've stopped, if I right click on that ruler, check this out, I have a log of all the shots. So if I want to go to the pan of the front of the house, I click that, it jumps right back there. You see it's also labeled there. I can right click here and say go to the side of the house. Okay? So it's, it's a nice way to put them there, and as I've described earlier, as long as you have this little guy selected, if you were to delete stuff, that would ripple. So that's how you drop the markers in the clips and the timeline. Now, there's a really cool trick I want to show you here, and to, in order to show you this, i got to put some audio in my timeline. Now, this is something I just learned recently from a client. Now, if I hit play here, this has got a pretty loud music track, and there's some there's potentially some parts where it's really loud up here and see that it's distorting. Now let's say you've edited your heart out for a couple of weeks on a project and you have everything done and you're about to either kick it to tape or export you know, for YouTube or whatever it is you do and you want to just take a quick check. Gee, did I miss anything? Now watch this. Here's another type of marker. Mark audio peaks mark. Now what this is going to do is it's going to analyze my little timeline provided of course I have nothing selected but it analyzes the whole timeline and you'll see now it's put these little orange markers. There's a few here, there's a bunch down here and that means that if I come back here and play where there's no orange markers I'm not distorting, I'm probably pretty high but once I get into these orange guys Boom, boom, that's where my red lights come in. So that shows me that, let's say I just had one popping P or something like that. I could come in here, zoom in, do some audio fixes, and pull that out. I can always go audio peaks, you know, reanalyze if I've adjusted, make sure I got rid of them all. Of course, I've changed nothing, so they're all going to still be here. But once I'm done dealing with that and I've dealt with them all, I can go audio peaks clear, and they all go away. So those are some uh, marker tricks that you can use in your timeline. And like I said, for logging a, a bin full of um, stuff, it's really great to be able to, you know, you make a timeline called bin 7 or whatever, and you know, come down here and say, oh, here's the side of the house. So that's how I deal with markers. That's how I log my tapes.